G'day all, welcome to the Hardly Adequate Podcast. I've got Jaeger joining me again because I messed up and lost all his audio from last time. So it's a common theme for the start of 2024 with my guests coming on and uh, me screwing it up. But uh, thanks for joining me again, Jaeger. It's really good having you on again and it'll be good to catch up and see what's new from the last time, really. Yeah, no worries, mate. Um... Look, like I, like I said previously, I don't remember the question, so this is going to be <laughs> super fresh for, for myself as well. Nice. Well, um, before we kick off this part of a series of podcasts, and I'm putting these on YouTube now, but you can still listen to them on your favorite podcast app, wherever you get that from. Um, but we'll kick into the first question. So always I ask is, what's a normal workday like for you? A normal workday? So... I like to roll into work at least half an hour early. Um, so actually, I'll take a step back. So I manage a team of uh, 15 threat analysts. So I like to rock up a little bit early, um, get an idea of how the rest of the world's been um, rolling out across MDR, so manage detection and response across our company, and um, prepare my team for, for the start of their shift. So. That might be you know, looking into what kind of instant response engagements we have going, whether my team needs to take that on for the day, and you know, it's essentially assigning resources. So that's the first thing in the morning, and then throughout, I'm just monitoring, I guess, you know, case volume, detection volume, uh, any new instant response engagements that spool up, and just making sure resource assignments are good to go. Um, previously, I was a senior uh, threat analyst myself, so every opportunity I get, I try and jump in as well. So, you, you know, I don't like to miss out on the good juicy stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask that. So you, being more of a manager, I guess it's it's harder and harder to be technical, right? Because you probably deal with a lot of just admin and management responsibilities. So how often do you kind of get to jump in on the technical being at that <laughs> level now? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, and as the team grows, you know, more admin pops up naturally. Um, I think I try and put it on myself to make sure I make time for the technical. Um, I think it's really important to stay grounded. So, you know, you hear it quite often. Being technical allows me to make better decisions for my team and guide them to, you know, to the resources they need, uh, make better decisions, and just help them through their tasks. So no matter what, I still try and make time for it. How much time? Well, <laughs> depends how busy that week is. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, it is a tough balance to do the both of those. Oh, yeah. So let's go back a little bit before you jumped across and were, were, you were doing the senior threat analyst job uh, at the same company you're now managing for, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So let's go back before what you considered being in the cyber industry. What were you doing? And how did you kind of transition into where you are now? Yeah, mate. So I was, oh, look, let's go back at least 10 years. I was doing architecture. <laughs> so I was doing that for a good five to six years. And then I joined the Air Force as an, as an intelligence analyst and there were some transferable skills there. Um, I did that for, for a few years, I think about six or so. Um, but throughout that period, I was also studying a cyber degree through mm -hmm. Deakin University. And, um, I, you know, I could be wrong, but the, the cyber capability in Air Force while I was studying um, at that period wasn't really, there was no cyber warfare analyst position like there is today. Mm -hmm. um, so once that kind of position grew through within the Air Force, you know, I, I essentially jumped ship. I went from uh, the intelligence capability that I was in and applied to become a cyber warfare analyst and then yeah, jumped ship. And it kind of just really married up with my studies at the time mm -hmm. um, and my passion. You know, I wasn't studying a degree for the sake of studying. I, I did enjoy, you know, what cyber had to offer. Uh, I did enjoy it. And so transferring from intelligence into cyber was quite a natural progression um, at that point in time. Okay. So I want to jump into the degree in a second, but you mentioned that cyber was your passion mm. and you were an architect before. So you've had like quite an interesting <laughs> jump around. So architects, yeah. Intel analysts into cyber threat analysts. Yeah. 
what made you decide to go from architect into the military? And then was it, did you only find that passion once you got to the cyber side of things? Or when was that a real passion as well? And it was transferable skills as an Intel analyst. And you're like, oh, I'm really passionate, but I'm really more passionate about this. Like, I'm, I'm keen to like dig into the drivers. Yeah, yeah. So if I think about this more deeply, what I really enjoyed when I was doing architecture was the technology aspect. Okay. So I was responsible for a lot of the 3D modeling. Right. Um, you know, the, that involved a little bit of programming as well. Um, and if you kind of, you know, draw a few few lines from that, it kind of just naturally progressed to technology. And mm -hmm. from that, you know, intelligence, you know, deeply involved in technology, data yeah. and all the rest of it, it just it was a natural progression. Um, architecture I enjoyed because, well, I got into because I, I needed a cool job. I was very young, right? Like, I was like, what's cool? What can I get into while I'm working in, in a pub? So I studied architecture and got a job doing architecture. But I guess at that young age, um, I was still figuring out life and what I was interested in. Yeah. So I wasn't like, hey, I want to do cybersecurity back then. I think once I got into a job, I figured out I like technology from there, you know, from architecture to Air Force, intelligence, cyber. You know, and if I if I draw it on a on a sheet and detail like listed all the technical aspects of each position I did, it would almost look natural a little a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I guess the highlight of uh, when people are considering because it's a topic that we'll kind of get to at the end. But when people are considering wanting to be in cybersecurity, but where the natural skills are that you'll pick up in your job can transfer depending on where you want to transfer in cybersecurity. So uh, really good point on the technology is that was an interest and a, yeah. a driver and to then get in. And also problem solving all yeah. throughout that from architecture, architectural problems through to intelligence and now, so, you know, doing the cyber um, yeah. problem solving throughout. Yeah, that's really cool. So I want to go back and dig into the, the degree that you were doing. Yeah. How did you find that compared to what you were doing in the field, both in the military and then I guess when you got out, how did you find that degree married up to your job? Um, that's a hard question, eh? <laughs> I think I don't like saying this because it's too generic, but I, th I think going through the, the degree, like I did it part-time, so over six years, uh, teaches you how to think, teaches you how to write to a level. Mm -hmm. It teaches you some technology, it teaches you some cybersecurity. Um, it's a, it taught me the basics. Mm -hmm. It did, but I, I would, if I was to go back and yeah, I would recommend people to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I've got, analysts in my team that have not got a degree as well. So I'll outline that as well, you know, as a point. And they're fantastic. Do they need a degree? No, absolutely not. Um, but I think a degree does help. Mm. Yeah, I think I, I would agree with that. When I think back to my degree, the only other additional thing I would add is it teaches you how to do group work with shit groups that you can't fire. <laughs> Is the other Absolutely, thing. man. Yeah. And, you know, you're going through your degree, you're cramming through the night, you know, you're, you're yeah, doing true. assignments to 3 a.m. 3 in the morning, group works, like you said, um, working in, you know, in a group till 3, 4 a.m. to get the assignment done with shit people that you don't like from all parts of the world <laughs> in yeah. some circumstances. So you do learn to kind of push through. Yeah, true. And I've gone to TAFE as well. I've experienced both. Uh, yeah, that was going to be my, my next question is uh, more around cyber, like if you've mm -hmm. done TAFE courses that, that are cyber flavoured or, or any other kind of courses that you think helped feed into the role that you're in now. 
like they they could be like business or management or or anything but is there any other study that you did that you think really benefited your career uh for cyber yeah um look i i am all for you know i can i name names yeah companies for sure yeah, yeah sweet look tcm i think they're, they're doing fantastic work um mm. i've even heard good things about the blue team one and two um there there are a couple of uh, resources i've been recommending to the guys in my team uh i and i think it is i've heard good things about that okay um, yeah i haven't heard of them yeah, I hope that's the right name. Um, we'll find out and put it in the show notes later. All good. <laughs> yeah, I, and and to be honest, I think when people see the price, look, I just want to touch on the price of some of these these um, online resources. Look, I see it as an investment too. So whether it's a five hundred dollar course or a two thousand dollar course, I mean, at the end of the day, like upfront, that's a lot, but I think that'll pay off in dividends over the long run as well. The amount of knowledge that you can get out of these um, does go a long way. I think, you know, people getting into the industry, you know, it's quite daunting. Hey, I'm going to upfront two grand to study a course I'm just fig- figuring out in life and I don't even have a job maybe in mm. cybersecurity, you know, so it's a big cost up front, but uh, well, absolutely worth it, these sort of resources. I... Thinking about the cost, you can also kind of think about it in terms of how much does a degree cost you? Oh, yeah. And especially today with how much indexing is on hex debt. So if you're you're taking a debt and how much, you'll probably never pay that off with how much extra you're paying every year. I think they Um, came out today, actually. (laughs) They've started talking about it, but the official numbers aren't out yet. Oh, right, right. From the ACO. But in terms of cyber courses, you're right. Like you can see it as an investment in the same way. And it realistically could be cheaper Um, because most courses are fairly cheap. When you, when you look at the grand scheme of pricing of university degrees and then how much SANS is, because people always have asked me before, should I buy a SANS course? And I was like, no, just wait until an employer pays for one. Buy a, buy a cheaper course in the meantime if you're trying to get into the industry. Um, yeah, and it's yeah. about saving up. And like even I still budget for cyber courses for just stuff that I want to do in the back end that yeah. I don't want work to have to pay for. And it just sits there and if I find something interesting, you like I've got the savings for it, I guess. So Yeah, I like that idea. Um, I might propose it to my wife. <laughs> Budget for it, for it. <laughs> 100. Yeah. yeah, and I agree. Don't rely on your workplace to upfront those costs. Um, yeah. yeah, take it upon yourselves. Yeah, yeah. It's great if they can pay for it. I'm all for <laughs> someone paying for sands for me to do. It's great. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I'd ever buy one myself. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. what's been a, a career highlight for you so far? You can pick more than one. You don't have to just stick with. With the singular career highlight. Okay, okay. Um, getting in the air force. Yeah, I thought that was fantastic. Um, nice. Super excited. I think I waited two years to get in. Actually, um, two years from the offer defense gave me to actually the 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 first boot in Wagga. Yeah, that was about two years. Um, That's insane. Were you just waiting to get on a course because they were pushing so yeah. many people through? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that's nuts. Back then, I think I was on the second intelligence course in the RAF. Right. Second or third. Yeah. So it was fresh, super fresh. Yeah. And okay. even, you know, they were figuring things out themselves. What's this course look like? How often do we do it? Um, yeah. Yeah. So that was that was a big highlight. Career-wise, um, getting it accepted as a cyber warfare analyst in the in the mm-hmm. Air Force that was a big, big one for me. Because um, the reason why I say it was a big one for me is because what if they said no? Mm-hmm. I've been doing a degree all this time. I've been you know, doing all the hack the box, doing all the the best I can to you know get a 
a cyber ca- a career in the Air Force, and then they turn around and say no, and it's like, oh, shit, what do I do now? <laughs> Was that so? So this is it. for our listeners as well. Jaeger and I were in the same unit. We we kind of went through this whole process of, um, like before I exited, I was a cyber warfare officer. Were you actually worried about not, not getting it though? Yeah, man. Yeah, That's absolutely. Super interesting. Yeah. yeah, because yeah, it does go back to what would I do then? Yeah, you know, obviously it... life would go on, and I'd figure things oh, out. No, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> 100 percent but if like when i just think about like who the people that were applying at the time and then the the positions that they had and the positions that they need to feel like i i have a list in my mind of the people that there was no doubt and you were on that list so it's it's interesting <laughs> your internal perspective of kind of oh, i was worried that I, I i might not get it when i was just like oh yeah yeah, yeah, it's got this. Like he would have got it. So it's, I guess the self talk is is interesting to talk about as well because it feels a little bit like maybe imposter syndrome. Like oh yeah, oh I'm, yeah, I'm not good enough. And and what how do I put my life back together if the Air Force decides not to hire me as this analyst? Yeah, and it's super natural to feel that way. I I think um, yeah. you know, I think in hindsight you just got to. Give it a good crack, give it your all, and you know, and everything should turn out fine. But you know, <laughs> um, luck is a part of it. Uh, you know, I can't yeah. discredit that because um, at the end of the day, there's also very, very competent, um, like the group I was going through with and applying with. Um, there's some very smart people in their own right with their own experiences and. You know, so and I think it goes back to that point you were talking about before. You know, putting money aside for some training um, that only puts you in a better position to, you know, if you ever were in a circumstance where you were competing for a job or whatever it might be, um, it just does put you in a better position to compete. Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. Being realistic, you know. Yeah, and like. The episode that came out before this, when I spoke to Bruce, we talked about this as well, but how the industry still has quite a lot of open positions, but the bottleneck is that entry-level position. And so yep. why cyber isn't necessarily a entry-level job isn't because it's not an entry-level job, but it's because the um, supply outweighs the demand for entry-level. Yeah. Yep. So it pushes up the bar for everyone because you'll get really smart people, really motivated people that are doing like well above entry level and companies are kind of spoiled for choice in that sense. Yeah. But and you know what, you... like, I'll, I'll be honest, like half of my, when I do interviews and, and all the rest, half of my personal criteria is just being a good person, not being a dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can teach you what a prefetch is. I yeah. can't teach you not to be a dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess like you're also like because the supply is there, you can hire for personality, or you can you can hire for cultural fit easily. Oh, it's super people, important. People are you're getting enough applicants that have aptitude, mm. um, and so you just need the cultural fit because you're like, oh, I can teach you the rest. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, because we see it all over the place, all over LinkedIn and Facebook and all the rest, you know, um, get all these skill sets and, you know, guarantee you a job type thing. Well, it's like, no, you also need to be a good team player. <laughs> yeah. You know, who's teaching you that? Which, funnily enough, I don't know whether, going back to degrees, and I don't know whether your degree did this, but school and university doesn't necessarily teach you to be a good team player. Like, it, it teaches you to deal with, difficult groups and difficult situations. But it's very individualistic because it's university's got all this thing around like plagiarism, right? Whereas if I if I look at my day to day work, ninety percent of it's plagiarism. Like I'm taking like research or some kind of study and then I'm mm. analyzing a little bit of it and then I'm representing it or I'm writing a t- detection rule or something. You're applying it hundred percent. Yeah I'm, yeah it's yeah it's applied cybersecurity. But if I did that in university i just they'd be like oh turn it in <laughs> plagiarized get out of here 
I'd be like, oh, fuck. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're exactly right. I look, I don't want to. There, there was a quote I heard on um, on a shit feed on Facebook. I hate Facebook, um, <laughs> but with some SEAL, SEAL team guys, and they were talking about what makes a, a great team. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I've resonated with with it quite quite a lot. I thought, yeah, he's exactly right. Uh, it was something along, along the lines of being you you guys need to be uh dependable there's three things dependable was one of them skilled and selfless mm-hmm. that were the three that really stuck with me i'm like yeah if you got those three your team he said your team would be unstoppable yeah yeah um that's just reminded me of because now that we're talking about teams, it also reminded me of a quote from one of the founders that I worked at that he puts on um he put on LinkedIn a while ago. But he said, at our company, it's not we don't see people as a family because you put up with family. We like I see our company as a team because we're a bunch of high performers and we're all there for a job to do, and that that really resonated it as well when we, when we say team cuz i i also hate when companies go oh we're a family cuz it just means like do all the shit work and we're not going to pay you extra for it but if you look at it as a professional sports team like you're paid to do a job and you're paid to do it very well mm. and if you've got a whole bunch of high performers then your team wins and so it turns into this like competition atmosphere that but you can still have really good camaraderie in a team and that's yeah, I really like that one as well. Yeah, I like that. Everyone's got a place, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So now that we've kind of shit talk Facebook and uh uni degrees, um <laughs> what kind of passion projects are you doing? And cyber th- 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 and otherwise. What yeah, all right. Yeah, right now I'm playing with um I'm trying to create these snapshot report cards for my team mm. using grafana okay uh, yeah it's something i've been dabbling with for the last two three weeks so i've got you know all the metrics around you know cases and detections and all that sort of stuff around um what my analysts get up to the amount of time they're spending on it all that sort of snapshot metrics mm. but it's presented in an excel file to me <laughs> <laughs> so I'm dabbling that's with the, Grafana. Wait, hang on. That's that's the world's greatest database. I don't. It really is. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> it is. It has a place, and nothing else is filling it right now. But I'm not going to present an Excel sheet to my team. It's you know that, that that's not cool. So I've I've got this. Or I set up a Grafana instance. I've never touched Grafana in my life, and this goes back to like technology and problem solving and all the rest of it. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I've rolled out my first snapshot report for my team. That's it's beautiful. I love it. Nice. It's pretty. It's blue and purple, and it's got all these. You know, it's just pretty. It's super pretty. And uh, I love how you. I love how you complete a project and you just like. <laughs> ah. Yeah, yeah. So even before this 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 huddle that we were in, I was, you know, clicking around in Grafana trying to come up with you know really cool, you know stats and metrics and things yeah. i think nerdy people like us like data <laughs> yep. um even you know giving it to my team a few weeks ago they've come back saying oh what about this can we have this can we have that i'm like yeah i think i can you know problem like figure that out you know and i've just got like calculus playing in my you know running around in my head <laughs> that's really cool yeah um that's a cool project well i think it's cool others will probably think you know they're far out man that sounds like boring as fuck but i mean um, anyone in technical and cyber is probably like hell yeah where can <laughs> i where can you provide that template <laughs> exactly exactly uh i think what else am i doing let me think about that for a second um you know not not so much a project but something i'm trying to get really my head around a bit more is you know 365 and cloud stuff um Mm -hmm. you know how they're doing their detections because i know there's a lot of companies out there now um 
even the company I work for, who are ingesting third-party provide, provider data and uh, making sense of it and creating detections of it and all that good stuff. So I'm just trying to, you know, really focus on that right now. Um, yeah, that's a really cool. Like, I got to see some of that third-party integration. It's really interesting seeing, I guess, what the third party's APIs are giving up in terms of information, but then knowing what, if you went to the the main hub, so I'll use Slack as an example. Um, Slack will send API data and for detections, like if you want to do uh, like insider thread or fraud tracking through, because like Microsoft does it with emails and stuff through SharePoint and, and 365, but it'll do it with Slack as well. But then I know from, my old boss, because she had to do an investigation in Slack, how much data an admin portal in Slack has. But you need to piece it all together because it's not built for investigators. No. It's built for, it's just a bunch of databases that the program mashes together. But if you wanted to go pull all the data yourself, you actually have to stitch it all together with like goods. <laughs> and it's a nightmare. And so I was, I was chatting with our security architect being like, oh, what does Slack give you to Microsoft? And it's really basic. And I was like, oh, you know, you can get all this extra information. But then we were chatting about having to write the parses to go in between and and that kind of thing. And it's super interesting, like, when you get into that. Like, when you really get into detection engineering and, like, integrations, I get excited about that. <laughs> it it's is really cool. cool. Yeah. It is cool. It even has crossed my mind. Like, my mind, would I want to become a detection engineer? Because that is a really cool role. <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 just playing with data the whole time and it's like it's awesome yeah it is i've even set up a you know 365 dev account just to kind of tinker right yeah um setting up a lab for that uh, but yeah, there's not enough time in the day to be good at everything <laughs> i wish i didn't have to sleep because then i could just <laughs> use that time to human evolution hasn't gone far enough yet <laughs> no not at all man not at all. But what about um, any passion projects at home that aren't, aren't at cyber home? related? At, at home, that's not cyber related. Yeah, well, um, I mentioned to you earlier buying a house, right? So I'm, I'm about to buy a house. Yeah, we'll I'm be keen fixing to, up stuff eventually. I want to buy chickens. Okay. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I know nothing about them. And. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to get some chickens. I want to. I want to have some eggs. And yeah. um, my wife mentioned to me yesterday that she wants to get into bees. Um, I've weirdly enough, I've met like four people recently that all have their own beehives. Do they really? Yeah, they love it. Yeah, they do. And it's just like their bees just like land on them all the time, and they're just like, oh hey, and just like we'll walk around, and the bees will fly out. It's just because they're so used to them, but. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird when you get into like this. Um, I don't. I don't know whether someone mentions it's what at once, and then you just start recognizing. It, but it's weird that I've met four people, and they're all like have beehives, and now you're like, oh, my wife's gonna get a beehive. <laughs> yeah, and uh, to be honest, I think she's she's always been into bees for, like since I've known her. But now that we're getting a a bit of land, and mm -hmm. you know, well, not like an acre or anything. It's just some room for a beehive because um, we live in an apartment right now. She's going to explore that. And I love that. That's really cool. Yeah. So chickens, bees, and uh, a veggie patch. Nice. <laughs> I think what's drawing me to all that sort of stuff as well is just getting away from the computer. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can yeah, definitely I think, understand that. Yeah, I need to. Yeah. Gets a bit much when you're spending... 16 hours a day staring at a screen. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen your uh, gym videos. I see you getting away from the computer too. Yeah, that's a huge thing for me. I'm really enjoying that. And I've, yeah, enjoy, I was saying today to, uh, to my partner, like I just love having it at home because we can finish and still hang out in the gym. And we've got the dogs here as well. Like I wouldn't be able to take my dog to the, the local fitness first that it, uh, I'm sure everyone would love it, but then they'd be like, get out. <laughs> We're not covered for insurance for an Aussie <laughs> Shepherd. Yeah. Um, exactly, mate. Exactly. So 
what are your goals for the next six to 12 months? And maybe like what well, sounds like your personal goals are veggie patch, beehive and <laughs> chickens. Um, so you've got that sorted. Yep. What else have you got on the books do you think? Yeah, uh, look, I think um, so I've been the, the team lead, the manager for the Australian team for the last year. Um, I think I want to pick up a SANS course. I need to pick up something a bit more technical just to keep my, you know, stay grounded like I mentioned earlier. Uh, I'll probably pursue something like that. Have you looked at which one you want to do? I I have, but there's too many good ones. <laughs> That's fair. There's too many good ones. You know, like on one hand, I'm like, oh, let's do another technical one. Um, I've got a couple of GX already under my belt, but it's like, how many technicals do you do? Or do I do a manager one? Um, I need to figure that out. Yeah. I, I, I do. Um, and where I want to take my future as well. That's true. So that's that's where I where I am at in my head. Mm. Um, but I'll figure it out. So hopefully I'll get one of those under my belt in the next six to twelve months. Um, but also I want to work on a couple of strategic goals um, where I'm at as well in the organisation. Oh yeah. Yeah. Some. I think you know, I might even pick your brain. Actually, I'm keen to uh, maybe do a CTF oh, yeah. organization. I know you've done a few, mate. I've got YouTube videos on how to set those up. So. <laughs> oh, mate, I will. I will be hitting you up for those links because, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's really yeah, that's going to happen. Mm. That'd be really and, cool. Yeah. Um, look, in my head, it's probably going to take you know a very long time to build and develop but uh i, I mean know. like you can even like depend depends what you want right like i i did a talk i think it was adelaide sec that i did that talk um on building the ctf but the whole point of it was to build your yearly security awareness training as a ctf oh. so it, it wasn't built for necessarily the technical people it was built for everyone to do and the whole point was it was to make it a competition because humans are inherently competitive and want to see their little fake internet points go up on the leaderboard. <laughs> and so that's where I was just like, oh, do a CTF, but do it for everyone and then change it every year so it's not that boring, like, watch this American video and then answer these three questions. And if you get one of them wrong, you just have to do it again. Like, we, we went through so many of those in the military. So I was like, what makes it more fun and, like, impactful to individuals in the organization and that's for someone who's already technical setting that up is so it's low cost it's really easy to do because you've just got to kind of come up with 20 questions that can be a little bit competitive yeah yeah, yeah absolutely so we've got teams all throughout the globe mm. so we're thinking you know a bit of competition so that'd be cool you know, every quarter maybe there's a CTF, and each team throughout the globe competes against it. Uh, competes, and then at, at the end, it's up to the top two teams. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'll pick your brain. Yeah, definitely. That'd be cool. That'd be awesome to run. Awesome to to get some feedback on how it goes as well. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're we're approaching the end. I think I've got. Three more questions for you. What did you want to be when you were a little kid? What did five-year-old Jaeger want to be? Oh, man. Like a cowboy, a copper. Um, I think that were the two. Yeah. Uh, I think when I became, when I was about 12, 13, it then became SWAT, Special Forces, all that cool, fun stuff. Um, stopping bad guys. Stopping bad guys. <laughs> But you're kind of there, right? Just yeah. stopping cyber bad guys. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah, nice. um, yep. And what do you do at the moment to get away from work and unwind? Drink lots and lots of wine. <laughs> and you're in the you're in the correct state for that. That's for sure. Oh yeah, I've even got a glass of wine in front of me as we talk. Nice. Nice. <laughs> 
Although I think the bottle was being open for at least two weeks on the counter. It was a bad wine that I didn't want to drink. <laughs> oh, they uh, rough when they've been yeah, open for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been, you know, you know Liam? Yeah. Um, been going to a couple of bands with him lately, which is kind of cool. Going, oh, going nice. And seeing a couple of bands. So, been doing that a bit more. I, I stopped for a few years. I don't know why. I think life got in the way. Life got busy. COVID. Uh, COVID. Yeah, yeah, that chestnut. Um, but now I'm finding my groove. I feel like everything in my life, in my career, everything is kind of like s- settling down a bit. Nice. And I'm finding the time now to go, hey, I can go do this. Yeah, yeah. I can definitely appreciate that. Early on, it feels constant hecticness to mm. and and also the wanting to help i think yeah and always be switched on and helping and it's hard to get that that boundary and don't get me wrong like i i still work way more than i probably should but <laughs> yeah there are days where i'm just like oh, i'm just gonna actually enjoy my afternoon kind of thing the other thing i did was recently i bought a for for the last, I don't know, I'm going to throw some random number out there, 10, 15 years, mm. I've only ever bought non-fiction books. Okay. Recently, I bought a fiction book. Yeah. Stephen King one. In fact, one okay. of his new ones. Yeah. Because I felt like I needed to stop being so technical and problem solving and just, just chill out. <laughs> so yeah. I bought a fictional book just to kind of attempt to do that Mm, nice that's really cool yeah it's funny you say that i've been i love audio books um because it's easy to like go for a walk and and listen to something but for so long i was listening to like books on cyber or business like marketing books or or marketing wow yeah well because that like i i run this and i'm i'm trying to build Uh hardly adequate as a brand and stuff so i've i've been trying to listen to a lot of that good but then yeah i, I listened to um it's like a tv series it's called the expanse but it's from a, a trilogy of books um so i've been listening to that and it's actually i've really enjoyed going back and just listening to like fiction again and nice. not ha- like just listening to the story and taking the story in rather than trying to listen and then be like okay how do i apply this yeah yeah right Calm down. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hard to that... hard to switch off, but yeah, it's good. Um, all right. So the last question that I have is, what recommendation do you have for people that are currently outside of the industry that are looking to get in? Yeah, I would think that's a hard one, right? There's no answer to it, but I can, you know shoot from the hip and give some <laughs> handy guidance. Yeah. Um, stick to what you're interested in, I think, um, is one of them. So I don't know whether you're into, someone's into malware analysis or pen testing, whatever it might be. Cybersecurity is very broad. I find it a lot easier to find that passion and stick to something when you're interested. Um, for example, there's a couple of certifications out there, for example, that are just so bloody boring, right? Like, it's like, man, this is dry. And maybe that's not the best way for them to learn. Maybe mm. they just need to, rather than listening to what people are saying to do, identify what you're interested in and learn that deeply. Mm. You know, um, I think that might be, in my opinion, um, utilizing your time value valuably um that's one thing and slow down i think everyone tries to be good at everything real quick um i think learn things well deeply slowly Mm -hmm. i think because if you don't it's almost like you forget it a week later you may have read something or watched a youtube video did a course but if you're just a page turner, just reading through the content, you're not contextualizing, you're not absorbing it slowly, you're just going to forget it. And it's like, what's the point? 
Yeah. Slow down. Yeah. That's good advice. Probably. Yeah, it's probably where it's at. Awesome. Well, that's all I've got. And I want to thank you again for joining the podcast and recording it a second time. Um, it's been so long since I've talked to you because I think it probably would have been this time last year almost that. Has it been that long? Shit. Yeah, I reckon it. I reckon it has been a while because it was sitting oh, there man. for ages. But yeah, it's been ages since we've caught up. Man, I thought it was like six months. <laughs> it, could, it could be. It could. I don't my, know. Mem- my memory is really bad. I could go back and look at when we recorded this one. Actually, I'll let you know afterwards when I when I have a look. But it okay. just has been a while since we've caught up. But I did see you at um Adelaide Sec. Yes, I think last time. So. Yeah. 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 Thanks for joining me, mate. No worries. Pleasure. All right, everyone. Well, all of the content that I have is free. Uh, You can get me on YouTube or any of your favorite podcast apps. Uh, If you want to get more, you can either join my Discord, which the link is from my website, hardlyadequate.com, and I'll catch you guys all next time.